here it is July 29th 2011 and I was doing some more research on Comet Elenin and I came across a few websites that I wanted to bring to everyone's attention here and uh, this website is by Astro Bob it is astrobob.areavoices.com and I will include the, all of these links in the order in which I present these and they will be in the box below okay to, to begin here this one starts off with an image of an asteroid called Vesta. A little bit of info only on this uh, asteroid. I'm not going to get into that, but you can check it out on the website. Okay, about Comet Elenin. Here's a, a, an image of Comet Elenin. And to read here, I've got good news about Comet Elenin. Southern Hemisphere observers report it's brightened up to a healthy magnitude 10. This puts it within easy range of 6-inch telescopes. Michael Matiazzo of Victoria, Australia reports magnitude 10.5 on July 21 with a moderately condensed coma, 3.5 minutes across, 30 minutes equal one full moon diameter. He was using an 8 inch reflecting telescope and magnification of 45 times. David Sargent, another Australian amateur astronomer and discoverer of Comet Sargent in 1978, reports Elenin's brightness at magnitude 9.9 using a 25 by 100 binocular telescope. After lagging in brightness for several months, Elenin's back in the game. I'm still hopeful it will rise to naked eye brightness in October. So there's a chance that uh, Elenin's magnitude could increase by October and if it does increase enough we should be able to see it by the naked eye in October. But that is of course if Elenin is big enough or bright enough. More on that later. But uh, here's a star map, and it shows Elenin's progress uh, up till about now. And this is in the constellation Leo. And continuing here, uh, since the comet has perked up in brightness, that means observers in the southern U.S. will now have a good shot at seeing it in the next few weeks with the moon gone from the sky. Comet Elenin is currently in the constellation Leo. For a sky watcher in, say, Phoenix, Arizona, it hovers about 10 degrees above the western horizon an hour and a half after sunset. Observers further south will have even better viewing opportunities with the comet higher up still. If you're new to the sky and don't have a telescope, don't bother looking for Elenin yet. It's still too faint. But if you're versed in the constellations, have a good view of the western horizon, a six inch or larger telescope, and know how to use a detailed star map, it is worth the hunt. Should you find it, please share your observation with us. So it's saying you need about a 6 inch or larger telescope. And uh, you want to learn how to read a star map and find it on the western horizon in Leo. Just like Leonid Elenin, okay? And here's a little information about Astro Bob down here. And uh, so those of you who are able and have the means, uh, if you're interested enough, you should get a, a good telescope and see if you can take some images of that. I'll get into more images of Elenin later, but um, on this website it, show, it does show a picture of Elenin here. Uh, this is courtesy of Michael Matiazzo. little faint image, not, not very good to look at. And then I stumbled across the UFO blogger in my search of Comet Elenin. And uh, it's titled here, uh, Comet Elenin to Fulfill 2012 Maya and Hopi Prophecy. And I don't, I'm not one to really get into prophecies, but I'm bringing this up because it is a little interesting with what they tie in here. Okay, reading here. Last week we had reported here how planetary alignments with Comet Elenin cause big earthquakes. Now we have learned Comet Elenin, C2010X1, has a large mass. That this will likely be a considerable influence on Earth's physical environment. As in the case of the fact that the mass and size of the long period comet is not yet confirmed, remains an uncertainty and speculation which the effect of a flyby has. It must be assumed that when the comet has a large mass, that this would likely have a considerable influence on Earth's physical environment. So simply putting, if Comet Elenin or, or anything has a large mass coming close to Earth or on its approach, would have considerable influence on Earth's physical environments. Uh, like these earthquakes with these alignments that people have put together and it's the evidence is shocking to say the least long period objects in elliptical orbit long period objects are a big danger for the inner planets there are different reasons for that first historical 
Long period objects are not recognized in the younger human history and therefore forgotten, only written down in metaphor and symbolic languages from ancient cultures like the Atlanteans, Sumerians, and also recorded to the Old Testament. So for long period objects that are from the ancient time and equity times, they would only be recorded in like writings or, or depictions. Second scientific, long period objects with an elliptical orbit of 11,800 years cannot have a small mass. That is simply given from the law of physics. Objects with smaller masses have short elliptical orbit from up to from two up to 1,000 years or so, like asteroids or comets. Therefore, objects with bigger mass staying in long period orbits. The fact that LNN comet C2010X1 enters our solar system close to the ecliptic with a period of 11,800 years makes this object very dangerous, so it is good to keep an eye on it. Now, as far as the nature of comets goes, I've heard of electric comets and comets that can, I don't know, sort of propel themselves or become bigger in magnitude, but I can't really confirm that. But I would say it does make a lot of sense that something would need mass. A larger mass to have a, an orbit period of 11,800 years. I could be wrong in the instance that comets could maybe boost themselves somehow, but I really don't have much proof on that. But 11,800 years, that's that's pretty big orbit. That means that uh, 11,800 years ago was the last time, and who knows if that's depicted in the Bible. It could be. And uh, I like this little chart here, Elenin's future alignments. So it looks into the future and tells you alignments of what, what's included with Elenin and Earth aligning. Always included is Elenin and Earth plus maybe just the Sun or just Jupiter or Mercury and Mars. Excluding the Sun here, September 6, 2011. So good to look in the future for once instead of looking into the past, I'd say. And it gets into the comet Elenin and the Maya, which I won't really get into. I'm not saying it's not interesting, but it... If you want to read about that, go ahead. Uh, Comet Elenin and the Hopi. I want to bring this up. Okay. The Hopi's prophecy ties a little into the Mayans' concept of creation, the Great Cycle. The prophecy has been part of their tribe's oral tradition that has dated back since time immemorial. This is their prophecy, as recited by White Feather of the Bear Clan to Reverend David Young in 1948. The fourth world shall end soon, and the fifth world will begin, quoting here. This the elders everywhere know. The signs over many years have been fulfilled and so few are left. This is the first sign. We are told of the coming of the white-skinned men like Pahana, but not living like Pahana men who took the land that was not theirs, and men who struck their enemies with thunder. This is the second sign. Our lands will see the coming of spinning wheels filled with voices. In his youth, my father saw this prophecy come true with his eyes, the white men bringing their families in wagons across the prairies. This is the third sign. A strange beast like a buffalo, but with great long horns, will overrun the land in large numbers. These white feathers saw with his eyes the coming of the white men's cattle. I guess the long horn, that's interesting. This is the fourth sign. The land will be crossed by snakes of iron. This is the fifth sign. The land shall be crisscrossed by a giant spider's web. Some people liken that to the World Wide Web. This is the sixth sign. The land shall be crisscrossed with rivers of stone that make pictures in the sun. This is the seventh sign. You will hear of the sea turning black and many living things dying because of it. Could that be an oil spill? This is the eighth sign. You will see many youth who wear their hair long like my people come and join the tribal nations to learn their ways and wisdom. And this is the ninth and last sign. You will hear of a dwelling place in the heavens above the earth that shall fall with a great crash. It will appear as a blue star. Very soon after this the ceremonies of my people will cease and they have blue star highlighted here because I suppose they're tying Elenin in with that. I'm not one that would say that that would directly correlate to Elenin, but I would say that uh, when it says here you will see, hear of a dwelling place in the heavens, that sounds to me like a planet or something. People used to say the space station, but uh, maybe that too. 
and that's above the earth that shall fall with a great crash that sounds terrible <laughs> if that really happens that's terrible whatever it is these are the signs that great destruction is coming and uh, the world will rock to and fro the white man will battle against other people in other lands it gives more information here that's quite interesting to look into and it gives other related articles here that I checked out pretty good info well you have to be able to pick and choose you have to be able to know what's just you know somebody like if somebody says Ellen and his Nibiru you have to have the sense to know that nobody has that sort of proof that's just pure speculation okay now I brought this one up when I was in my search for Ellen and it's talking about how uh, NASA is confused about cluster comet Elenin. And here's a latest picture. And uh, there, there may be more than one, but uh, as far as uh, NASA goes, but this is a, a picture that pretty much supposedly to de depicts Elenin as a cluster of many different objects, which sounds pretty bad if it's going to be coming a little close to Earth. I mean, if it's a cluster, so. That raises another flag for Ellen in there, cluster Ellen. In. I will get into this here shortly, but uh, below that, uh, reading here, NASA warns anomalies, stereo nodes that are taking place by the approach of Ellen, as well as viewing the coming days 1 through 15 August. In other words, stereo behind should be able to record Ellen in uh, from August 1st through the 15th, and possibly its tail. Uh, continuing, the Sechi team requests to roll the behind spacecraft by 135 degrees for two hours per day each day between August 1st or late on September 31st and August 12th to observe Comet Elenin as it flies within 0.05 AU of the spacecraft. Observations of the comet at a wide variety of phase angles will provide information about composition. So look forward to that date. We'll, we'll hopefully a lot more news will be flowing out about Comet Elenin, more on its composition and size and Maybe we can finally get some truth behind this. So that's not far away, August 1st through the 15th. There's also a possibility that the NC2 instruments on behind will see the ion tail. The requested two hours per day will include the roll and settle times, with the roll starting on an even hour boundary, and then back to nominal roll and settle on the next even hour boundary. You can continue reading here if you want to learn more about SOHO, Stereo A and B, and uh, you can look on YouTube too, Soho and find all kinds of people seeing anomalies around the sun. But uh, I wanted to bring this to everyone's attention. Uh, for those of you that are not familiar with the Perfect Minds channel, check him out. Subscribe to him, uh, Francis. He has very good images of Comet Elenin. And uh, I'm not going to play the video here, but you can go to his channel and find all kinds of good good images of Comet Elenin and uh, different at different views and also uh, different shutter speeds and he's been experimenting with it and uh, very good to say the least very good but uh, that's my report for now just to kind of sum everything up we've got the Hopi prophecy perhaps tying in with uh, well current events at least maybe not Elenin but maybe and uh, also talking about how Elenin must have a large mass to have such an elliptical orbit of 11,800 years. So keep that in mind. Maybe this object doesn't have to be big. It could be really dense and heavy. Real dense. Perhaps even uh, more, more than Earth. I mean with a lot more weight than Earth. But that is yet to be seen. So we'll, we'll keep looking out for more information and only the truth. I'm just trying to fill in gaps here and and uh, with only the truth and, and maybe a little speculation in this video but once again I don't believe nor disbelieve the Maya and the Hopi but very interesting and very interesting how 2012 is and a lot of you are familiar with that but that that sums up my report for July 29th 2011 Serpentium 7 out